A woman named Ada advises her favorite author against traveling to India because his wife could get sick. He ignores the warning because he doesn't trust her, but rather surprisingly, his wife gets very sick, just like Ada predicted. As he gets fascinated by this, he goes to see her again and she makes him experience a series of hallucinations that makes him believe she's a divine being. One day, a girl named Sarah is walking home from school when she sees another girl named Amy carving her name on a tree. Sarah approaches her because she thinks it's bad, but she's unaware that Amy is part of a group of kidnappers who soon arrive in a van to take her away. As a boy named Anton quickly drags her into the van, the driver, Tamsin, quickly speeds off. While on the move, Sarah sees a street pole and realizes that they're driving near a place called Black Marsh Road. After a while, the van stops, and they arrive at a mansion in the middle of the woods. As Sarah is taken out of the van, she sees a couple of kids with white colored hair looking excited to see her. Before she realizes what's going on, Tamsin calls her Asha and tells the other kids that Sarah is now their new sister. Elsewhere, a lady named Freya completes an endurance test by holding her breath in water for a while. Her son, Billy, helps her count the time, and as she comes out, he praises her for breaking her previous record. Shortly after, Freya and Billy head over to a nearby coffee shop. While Freya is inside, she watches the news and hears the report of a missing girl. This immediately gets her worried, and even though Billy is playing with his friend, she hurriedly takes him home. Meanwhile, Sarah looks around the house and sees that the fridge and windows have been padlocked. She then says she wants to go home, but Tamsin doesn't care, and she then forces the new girl to dye her hair. Later that night, Sarah starts crying on her bed, but Amy consoles her and joins her in bed. She also mentions that Sarah has to stop crying so that Tamsin and their other guardian, Hannah, won't beat her. Elsewhere, Freya's mom, Christine, arrives at Billy's school when Freya is around to pick up her son. She says she has a letter for Freya, who doesn't seem interested in talking to her mom. Christine then follows them home, but as they arrive, Freya sees a white van passing, so she quickly runs to the road to check it. She doesn't eventually get a good glimpse of the van. Freya remains quite scared. After entering the house, Billy asks if Christine will stay with them for dinner, but Freya says she has to leave. This gets him angry, and he locks himself inside a nearby room. Freya then begs her son to open the door, but he refuses. As she then struggles to open it, she unknowingly hits Billy with the door. She instantly says sorry and tells Billy that it was an accident, after which Christine helps him deal with the bruise. While investigating the missing girl's case, a detective named Joe arrives at the mansion in the woods to see if he can find anything. The mansion belongs to a woman named Adrienne who is a spiritual leader known to have many kids in the house. Before Joe goes too far, a man named Henrik stops him. Because he also doesn't have a warrant, Henrik tells him to leave. Meanwhile, Sarah finds a phone in the house and decides to call for help. Hannah immediately stops her and says that no one can find the house. Sarah then mentions that she can wait at Black Marsh Road, and this leaves Hannah shocked as she realizes that the girl knows where they are. Later that day, a lawyer named Bryce arrives at the mansion, and as Henrik tells him about Joe, he blames Tamsin for kidnapping a child. Tamsin says she only wanted to impress Adrienne, but Byers says their whole operation could now be in danger. He suggests dropping Sarah off at a public park, but Hannah mentions that Sarah knows where they are. With this, they then decide to wait until Adrienne arrives. A few hours later, the spiritual leader reaches the house and scolds Tamsin for what she did. However, she decides not to take any action. She then calls for Amy, who refers to Adrienne as her mom. As they start talking, Adrienne calls Amy her favorite child and tells her to take care of Sarah and guide her to understand their ways. Shortly after, while all the kids are outside, Sarah starts throwing stones at the house, forcing Tamsin to take her back to the room. Before she is then beaten, Amy stops Tamsin and tells her that she's now in charge of the new girl. Tamsin doesn't look happy about this, but she eventually leaves. Sarah then tells Amy that she wants to go back home. She says she misses her friends and other fun things she used to do, including watching TV. Amy then suddenly slaps her because mentioning things like TV is considered a bad word in the house. As Amy then leaves the room, Sarah sees that Tamsin forgot to take away the keys to the door. She immediately picks out the one to the window and returns it before Tamsin realizes what has happened. That night, while the kids are having really small food for dinner, Hannah calls Sarah to inform her that her mom is on the phone. Sarah looks excited, but as she answers the phone, it turns out to be Adrienne. Sarah then leaves the phone and says that Adrienne is not her mother. This gets Adrienne pissed, and as Tamsin says, it's Amy's fault for not teaching Sarah well. The spiritual leader orders Amy to be beaten while she listens over the phone. The next day, Amy wakes up and sees that Sarah has left the school through the window. However, she says nothing. When Tamsin comes for a head count, she realizes that Sarah is missing, so she gets everyone to start looking for her. Elsewhere, Freya suddenly sees Sarah running past her house. She looks terrified by this, but still chases the girl. After a while, though, she discovers that she's only hallucinating. 
She then runs back home to quickly check on Billy. Later on, Amy sees Sarah hiding in a tree and decides to say nothing. However, she's unable to stop Anton from seeing Sarah and reporting to the adults. Later that day, Freya drops Billy off at school and decides to visit her mom. When she gets to the house, she greets her mom's nurse, Mo, after which she sits down to talk to her mom, who turns out to be Adrienne. As Adrienne then says random things, she refers to Freya as Amy. Many years before she became Freya, all the kids in the mansion are taken to the headquarters of Adrienne's cult named the Kindred. While she's preaching to her congregation, Sarah suddenly grabs the microphone and says Adrienne is not her mom. However, no one believes her, and Tamsin quickly takes her away while Adrienne jokes about it with her followers. After the event, Adrienne goes outside and sees Joe waiting. She looks surprised to see him, but he says he's just trying to investigate Sarah's disappearance. Adrienne says she knows nothing about it, but Joe says he's sure he'll eventually link her to something that will get her jailed because he thinks her ways are shady. Shortly after, Adrienne begins an individual counseling session with her followers. A detective named Colin is one of them, and he tells Adrienne that he's scared of his wife finding out the truth about him. Adrienne then tells him not to worry because the kindred will always be there for him. Later that day, Colin sees Joe working on Sarah's case and mentions that he just needs a warrant to search Adrienne's house. He then tries to get Joe to drop the case, but his colleague is not interested. Elsewhere, Tamsin puts Sarah in an underground cage and tells the young girl that she shouldn't have disrespected Adrienne. Later that night, Adrienne calls on Amy and tells her that since she's the heir to the kindred, she needs to begin her initiation by going through a process called the clearing. Adrienne then gives Amy a drug that makes her start hallucinating while she's being recorded. In the process, she sees Sarah crying for help, but she doesn't think any of what's happening is real. After a while, Amy sits down to cry near the fireplace and Adrienne comes over to take her away. The next day, Amy wakes up and starts thinking of Sarah. While looking around for the new girl, Bryce sees her and asks if she doesn't remember anything. As she says she has no idea what he's talking about, he says they've sent Sarah home because she's not a good fit for the kindred. That night, while Amy is writing something in her diary, Tamsin almost catches her, so she quickly hides her book. However, as she leaves the room, Tamsin finds the book and shows it to Adrian. The cult leader is not happy about this, and she blames Tamsin again for abducting Sarah because it's part of what Amy wrote in her book. Adrienne then tells Tamsin to call Amy to her office. As she then leaves, Adrienne tears some pages from Amy's diary. While the kids are eating that day, Hannah hears Amy talking about how Sarah must be enjoying at home. She gets angry and sends Amy out of the house to wait there as punishment. As Amy sits, she sees Henrik and goes to meet him. She then asks about Sarah again, and Henrik says he was the one who took her home. He then gives her a chocolate bar and tells her not to think of it again. Meanwhile, it turns out that Sarah is still missing, and Joe is now compiling his evidence to get a warrant to search Adrian's house. As Colin sees this, he leaves to meet Adrian. He then warns her about Joe and asks if she really kidnapped Sarah, but she denies it. After getting to the school, she tells the kids to head out on a picnic. With no one else left, Bryce then packs all the clearing tapes of Adrian's followers and leaves the premises. Meanwhile, Amy suddenly runs away into the woods with her book. Before anyone realizes that she's gone, it's already late, and Adrienne looks disappointed. Shortly after, Amy gets rescued by a man living nearby. After taking her into his house, he calls the police, and they don't take long to get there. Amy looks scared of them because Adrienne has always painted the police as bad people. She immediately runs away from the house, but after a while, she bumps into a tree and finally gets caught. When she wakes up in a hospital, Joe reads an entry in her diary where she claims that Henrik brought their new sister to the house. He asks if the new girl is Sarah, but she says nothing. Joe then leads his team to raid Adrienne's mansion. Tamsin sees them as they arrive, so she escapes. However, Henrik and Hannah are arrested, after which all the kids are rescued. Unfortunately, though, they don't find Sarah, and since Adrienne is also nowhere to be found, Joe suggests that she might have the missing girl. Meanwhile, Adrienne gets to the airport and boards a flight to France before anyone sees her. Elsewhere, a doctor named Christine tells Joe that Adrienne has really messed up with the minds of the kids. She also adds that the worst part is that all the kids still call her their mom. Joe then decides to ask Amy about Sarah again. Before he gets to her room, Anton blames Amy for Adrienne's disappearance. Amy still believes she did the right thing, but Anton disagrees. Joe eventually comes in with Colin and asks Amy about Sarah. She denies knowing who Sarah is, but as Joe mentions that the missing girl never made it home, Amy looks shocked and gives the detective the answer he wants. He and Colin then interrogate Hannah, Bryce, and Henrik about the happenings at the house. However, none of them sounds ready to give up any information on Adrienne. After this, Joe looks disgusted, as he can't believe that Adrienne has also brainwashed the adults. 
Colin also looks unhappy because he used to be one of her followers, but he doesn't tell Joe anything. When Joe then gets to his table, he sees an anonymous note that says a curse has been placed on him. The next day, all the kids start meeting their real parents because it turns out they were illegally adopted. Unfortunately, no one comes for Amy and Anton. Even though Anton believes it's because Adrienne is their mother, Joe says they'll become wards of the state. He gets angry and attacks Joe, but the detective is able to overpower him. Later that night, Anton asks why Amy lied about Henrik kidnapping Sarah. Amy then says that Adrienne told her to write it to protect everyone. However, Amy believes only Adrienne was protected by the diary because all the kids now have different families. Anton still believes in Adrienne, and he advises Amy to come live with him instead of going to a foster home. Amy rejects this offer, and Christine then takes her in as her child. Elsewhere, Henrik calls Adrienne to update her on what's happening. She then tells him to lie about kidnapping Sarah and also confirm everything in Amy's diary. That night, he does this and gets arrested. A few years later, Joe continues to work on the case until he finally gets Christine extradited from France. Bryce immediately starts looking for how to get Adrienne out, so he calls Colin for help. However, Colin says he's not helping Adrienne because he believes she's evil. Bryce then threatens to release the recording of Colin's clearing, but before he does that, Colin goes to meet his boss to confess that he's gay. While helping Adrienne, Bryce loses his job but doesn't care. He then commits his life to helping Adrienne. After bribing the jury, Adrienne is granted bail, and Joe is disappointed because he did all he could to get her jailed. Meanwhile, Amy has already become Freya, and she's at Christine's house with Wayne. Joe comes over to see her, but she doesn't seem interested in hearing what he has to say because she's now scared that Adrienne might hurt her. A few days later, Freya can't stop thinking about Adrienne. While her baby Max is crying inside the car, she leaves her there and heads out. Luckily, Wayne is nearby, so he breaks the window when he sees that Max is no longer moving. Following this, he files for the custody of his daughter and ends up winning, with Christine serving as a witness for him. Freya then gets sent to a mental institution because of what she did. A few weeks later though, Adrienne shows up and helps regain her freedom. Elsewhere, Joe is informed that Adrienne has been diagnosed with dementia, which means she won't be fit to stand trial. He doesn't believe this, but there's nothing he can do. While clearing his table, he sees a picture of Colin's car number plate. He realizes that it looks familiar, so he checks his work on Adrienne's case and sees that Colin is one of her followers. Joe confronts his colleague immediately, but Colin says he stopped following her long ago. He also tells Joe that if he were still a follower, he wouldn't have allowed Adrienne to get caught. To prove that he's now changed, Joe then gets Colin to help him break into where Bryce and Adrienne are living. Unfortunately, Joe gets caught and he loses his job as a result. However, he doesn't report Colin and his colleague is grateful for that. Years later, while Adrienne is receiving care for her dementia from home, Mo reports to Freya that her mother has left the house. She immediately figures out where she must have gone, so she heads to a nearby restaurant and finds her talking to Bryce. Even though Bryce then complains that Adrienne is being treated like a normal person, Freya takes her away and warns her not to leave the house again so that she won't be put under intensive monitoring. Later that day, Freya sees the strange white van again and calls the police to report it. However, she is told that there's no correlation between the van and the missing girl. Freya then goes to see Joe to talk about her concerns. He also says it's unlikely that there's a connection between the van and the missing girl. He adds that the missing girl's name is Carrie and that she might have just wandered away from home. As they keep talking, Joe also mentions that Henrik's parole has been approved after 22 years in prison. He then says he wonders what Henrik was promised because he has had to waste 22 years of his life in prison while the real criminal didn't get any charge. Shortly after, Freya goes to pick up Billy from school. When they get home, Freya notices that the gate is open and this gets her scared because she knows that she locked it before leaving. As she then locks it again, Billy starts asking about ants. Freya asks if it's what he's now learning in school, but he says his new friend, who he always meets by the school fence, told him about it. Freya immediately gets furious and tries to ask what his friend looks like, but Billy gets uncomfortable and tells her to leave him alone. Shortly after, Freya gets a call from Wayne, but she ends the call immediately. She hears his voice. Freya then calls Christine and accuses her of telling Wayne about how she accidentally injured Billy's face. She sounds scared and says she doesn't want to lose her son, but Christine mentions that she's only doing what's best for Freya. Following this, Freya visits Adrienne and tells her that Wayne already knows about Billy. She also mentions that she thinks he's the one who talks to Billy by the school fence. As she then looks scared, Adrienne holds her and says that no one will take Billy from her. She also tells Freya to get her something better to eat before Mo brings his usual boring meals. As she then seems to behave normally, it turns out that she doesn't have dementia. After Freya then leaves, Adrienne calls someone and asks if the person is already standing by the school fence, and she says she is. 
The next day, Freya is preparing Billy for school when a couple arrives at the house and claim to be the new owners. She, however, sends them away and goes to ask Adrienne why she sold her house. Even though Adrienne says the house belongs to her and not Freya, she adds that she knows nothing about the sale. Freya then goes to visit Bryce. As she sees him, he looks shocked and asks what she wants. She then accuses him of selling her house, and he confirms it. He also mentions that there are expenses that need to be paid for with the money. Freya leaves the house looking disappointed and heads to Billy's school to pick him up. As she gets there, she sees the strange white van nearby and runs toward it. Before she gets close to it, though, the van leaves. She then takes Billy away from school. But as they're on their way home, Wayne drives right behind Freya's car. She eventually stops to tell him to stop stalking her, but she says it's not the reason he came to town. He then tells her that he and Max got into a fight which led to her leaving the house with the intention of looking for her mom. He also mentions that she left home with her cousin's van. At this point, Freya realizes that Max has been the one talking to Billy by the fence. As Wayne sees Billy inside her car, he asks if he's the father, but she denies it and tells him to stay away from her son. After entering the car, she asks Billy if he knows his secret friend's name, but he says she didn't tell him. Later that day, Freya calls Joe to inform him that the person driving the white van is her daughter. He then says he'll make a few calls to help. The next day, Freya and Billy then see Max waiting for them at the entrance of the house after her van got seized by the police. Freya looks happy to see her daughter after a long time, and she welcomes her in. While Billy and Max are then eating at the table, Freya asks how her daughter found her, but she doesn't respond. Instead, she asks why Freya never wanted to be in her life, and she says it was to protect Max from her. A while later, Freya calls Wayne to pick up Max. When he arrives, he sees Billy and asks if Freya will introduce him to his son. Freya then says she's not ready for it, and he then leaves with Max. Later that night, Adrian then gets a visitor who turns out to be Anton. The next day, Freya goes to see Henrik in prison. Before she enters, she watches the news and sees footage of a potential suspect in Carrie's case, who is also said to have a van. As she eventually enters to meet Henrik, he looks shocked to see her and also complains that she's the only one who has come to see him in all the years he has been in prison. She then accuses him of being the reason her house is being sold because she knows that Adrienne is getting prepared to pay him for taking the fall and serving time for the kindred. Henrik gets angry at this and he can't believe Amy wouldn't want him to take the money after spending 22 years in prison. He then asks if she'd rather have him tell the police that everything in her diary was fake. This keeps Freya calm, but she now says she wants to know what really happened to Sarah. However, Henrik gets pissed and tells her to move on with her life. Later that night, Amy looks shocked when Anton visits her. She welcomes him into the house, and he immediately starts playing with Billy. After a while, Anton thanks Freya for being the only one looking after Adrian. He also calls her a good actress for still convincing everyone that she has dementia. The next day, Freya tells Anton to leave, even though Billy seems to enjoy his company. As she's then about to drop him off at school, she tells Billy that Wayne is his father and Max is his sister. She also asks if he'd like to spend some time with Wayne, and he says he'll only do that if his mom is also there. After school, Freya then properly introduces Billy to Wayne, after which they start playing together. Elsewhere, Anton meets with Max after Adrian connects them. After a while, Max mentions that she found Freya through the name on her birth certificate, and Adrian helped with the rest. She also mentions that she read about the kindred and found out about the terrible things Adrienne did. However, Anton says Adrienne was a spiritual leader. He also says that everyone deserves second chances, like Freya. Anton then reveals why Max has been with her dad and not her mom. The next day, Freya is supposed to meet with Max, but her daughter doesn't show up. This leaves her worried, so she meets Adrienne to complain about it. While she's there, she sees that Anton is also staying with his mom. As Mo then brings one of Anton's clothes to him, Freya recognizes it as the same shirt Carrie's suspected kidnapper wore. She immediately tells Joe about it, but before he can find anything, the news reports that the missing girl has just been found after wandering away from home. Freya doesn't believe this, and she heads to the old kindred mansion, only to see that someone had just been down the cage. Elsewhere, Anton joins a group of people in a meeting with Bryce, who is now restarting the kindred, with Adrian giving her sermons from home as she looks happy to have purpose again. It then turns out that her story began as a quiet girl named Ida, who wanted to follow her mother's footsteps in trying to get people to follow her ways. When she got older, she became a housekeeper for a doctor named Herzog and his wife Mariam. One day, Ida asks Herzog about the possibility of seeing beyond reality. He says it's possible, and she then looks into his eyes and tells him that she knows he's having problems in his marriage, even though he and his wife pretend to be okay. Herzog is intrigued by how good her guess is, so he gives her a book written by Bryce about living beyond reality. After a while, she changes her style and becomes Adrian, a bossy woman who now knows what she wants. 
She then visits Bryce to sign her book. And while they're talking, he mentions that he's traveling to India with his wife, who turns out to be Tamsin. Adrienne then advises Bryce against it because she feels Tamsin will get really sick on the trip. Bryce still goes ahead with the trip. And even though it's merely a coincidence, Tamsin gets sick and he starts to think of Adrienne as someone special. She then gets hallucinogenic drugs from Herzog and uses them on Bryce. After a period of severe hallucinations, he sees her as a divine being, and she also calls herself the Enlightened One. With Tamsin also being a follower, Adrienne smartly manipulates her and Bryce to separate so they can focus on what's to come. They then thank Adrienne for the advice by giving up their house so she can use it to raise pure children who will follow her ways. Days later, Adrienne organizes a party for her believers, including Henrik and Hannah, who are new converts. While Adrienne then preaches to her disciples, Miriam shows up and exposes her for being a fake prophet, but no one believes her. She eventually gets kicked out, but before she leaves, Hannah stops her and asks if Adrienne is a con artist. Miriam then repeats what she said inside and gives Hannah her number so she can call whenever she wants to talk. Adrienne sees this and doesn't look pleased, so she contacts Herzog to send his wife to a mental institution. She also gets him to give her a supply of hallucinogenic drugs, which she plans to use for the clearings. The next day, Hannah tries to call Miriam, but Adrienne tells her that Herzog's wife is now in a mental institution. Hannah feels disappointed by this, and after Adrienne leaves, she starts crying. Days later, Hannah goes into labor and delivers a baby, which gets transferred to the Kindred Mansion, along with the other babies Tamsin has helped Adrienne illegally adopt while working as a midwife. While Hannah then takes care of the kids, it turns out that her own kids are Amy and Anton. Back to the present, Freya accuses Anton of kidnapping Carrie and releasing her. He denies it and says he's no longer that kind of person, but she says she'll report him to the police. Adrienne then tells Freya not to involve the police. Elsewhere, Henrik gets released. And when no one shows up for him, Joe offers to take him to where he'll be staying. After Joe drops him off, he keeps following him until he sees Henrik dropping flowers for Hannah, who died a few years ago. As he then shows himself, Henrik tells Joe to stop following him because he has nowhere to go. Later that day, Max hangs out with Anton again, and he takes advantage of this to take her to see Adrienne. When they get to the house, Adrienne looks happy to see her. As they then start talking, she tells Max to ignore everything she has heard about her and the kindred. She also says that she wants Max to be free from her past, which she had to live without her mom. Just then, she starts talking about how mothers shouldn't abandon their children while indirectly trying to turn Max against Freya. The next day, Freya notices that someone has entered her house because there's a strange flute there. Out of anger, she meets Anton to accuse him again, but he says he knows nothing about it. As she's then about to leave, she sees a woman named Ebony and her child Tyler in the garden. Freya asks who they are, and as Anton calls Tyler to come inside to greet his aunt, she looks shocked. She then asks why he never told her he has a kid, but he only says he's now a changed person. He also mentions that if she's really worried about who could have broken into her apartment, she should ask Henrik because he has been talking to Adrienne. She then finds his apartment, but it turns out that he's no longer staying there. Suddenly, she decides to go to the Kindred headquarters, only to see Adrienne preaching to new congregation members with Anton also present. The next day, she confronts Adrienne about it, but she threatens to send Freya back to the mental institution if anyone hears about it. As she's then leaving, Mo says he's suspecting that Adrienne doesn't have dementia, but Freya brushes off the suggestion. Freya then calls Joe to meet her at the Kindred headquarters. When they get there, it turns out that everything that was used on the previous night has been cleared. Freya can't believe this, and as Joe tells her to stop overthinking things, she confesses that Adrienne doesn't have dementia. She also tells him how her diary was part of a big plan to get Adrienne freed. Joe looks shocked by this revelation, and he blames Freya for losing all he had, including his family. Elsewhere, Henrik visits Bryce at the Kindred headquarters. He then asks for Amy's clearing tapes, but Bryce says he doesn't have them anymore. Meanwhile, Max decides to leave the city and head back to where she and Wayne used to live. As Freya tries to say goodbye, Max acts really cold toward her, and it forces her to ask Wayne if he told her what happened when she was a child. Wayne then says he never told Max because he never thought Freya was at fault. Later that day, Joe still attends the wedding of one of Freya's kindred sisters named Abigail. Everything seems to be going well until Adrienne's presence angers some of the old kindred kids. Joe then has too much to drink, so he reveals what Freya told him. Before he says too much, Anton punches him and they start fighting. After the party, Freya arrives home, but it turns out that Henrik is now living in Billy's playhouse. The next morning, Freya starts her regular endurance swim, with Billy counting for her. However, when she's through, she sees that Billy is nowhere to be found. She immediately informs the police, and they start looking for him. While she's then moving around the house, her dog keeps barking in front of the playhouse. When she checks it, she sees that someone has been staying there for a while. 
As she then plays the music player, she remembers the song and realizes that it was Henrik. She then goes into the house to inform the detective about it. However, she believes that Freya must have harmed her son and lied about him going missing. Christine soon arrives and tells Freya to say nothing until a lawyer arrives. Shortly after, Freya tells Christine that she believes the kindred have Billy. Christine then mentions that someone walking nearby reported seeing a van passing the area earlier. Freya immediately says it's likely Anton, and Christine then helps her escape from the house. Meanwhile, Adrienne finds Tamsin and convinces her to join the kindred again. Even though Tamsin is not keen on this, Adrienne subtly threatens her with everything she did in the past. A while later, Freya goes to Adrienne's house but sees that all her things have been cleared. Mo also looks shocked when he arrives, and Freya confesses that Adrienne wasn't sick. She then asks if he noticed anything suspicious, and he says that Adrienne mostly talked about birds. He also shows her a list of birds she always talked about, including one named Corella. She immediately heads to meet Joe to help her find Billy. As she also mentions that Adrienne is nowhere to be found, Joe says it's because she knows she's about to be caught. He then offers to let Freya stay with him while he finds out more about where Adrian went. That night, while Joe is talking to Colin about how he can help to finally arrest Adrian, Freya hears this and looks scared, so she leaves. She then heads to the Kindred headquarters to see if she can find anyone. There, she sees Henrik looking for something. She accuses him of kidnapping Billy, but he says he was only staying close to her to stop the Kindred from taking her son. After he also says that he no longer believes in Adrienne, he then tells Freya that she and Anton are his children. Freya looks shocked to hear this, and she shouts at him for not protecting her when she was younger. She also says that he should have been in jail for life. As she's leaving, she then suddenly remembers that there's a boat company named Corella. She immediately heads there and steals a boat to head to a nearby island. When she gets there, it turns out that there's a new camp for the kindred on the island. As she then moves closer, she sees Bryce preaching to some of the new members, including Ebony and Tyler, who turn out to not be related to Anton. After Freya enters the house, Adrian and Tamsin also walk in. Freya immediately accuses her of kidnapping Billy, but she says she didn't do it. She then tells Freya to stop blaming people for things that could be her fault. As Adrian and Tamsin leave her, Freya hears Billy calling her name, so she keeps walking around. Parts of the house look similar to the one she was raised in, so she starts getting triggers from her past that show her what really happened on the night of her clearing. It turns out that after Sarah was taken out of the cage, Adrienne told Amy to baptize her until she was clear of her sins. In the process of dipping Sarah's head into a bowl of water repeatedly, on the orders of Adrienne, Amy ends up killing the girl. As she also sees her clearing tape and watches it, Freya confirms that she really killed Sarah. Freya looks sad about this, and Adrienne then shows up and tells her that if she forgot what happened to Sarah, she might have forgotten what happened to Billy. Freya looks devastated by the thought of killing her son, but Adrienne keeps her calm. Elsewhere, Anton tells Bryce that Freya might report them when she leaves the island. However, Bryce tells Anton that he must not let her leave. Later on, Henrik visits Joe while he's working on finding Adrienne. Meanwhile, Anton comes over to tell Freya that Max is on her way to the island. Freya doesn't believe this, but he then tells her how he took Max to see Adrienne to get her to believe in the kindred. He also adds that he gave Max his van before leaving. As she hears this, Freya realizes that Max might have saved Billy. However, Anton says she's making things up. As he also appears to have drugged the milk he gave her, Freya slowly loses consciousness. Before she passes out, though, she tells him about their real parents, but he doesn't believe her. Much later, when she wakes up, she sees Tamsin watching her. Freya says she doesn't think she killed Billy because it's likely that Max saved him. Freya then asks why Tamsin can't see Adrienne for who she is. Tamsin says it's because she loves her. As Freya then accuses her of doing nothing while Sarah died, Tamsin feels hurt because she has always regretted it. Following this, Freya begs her to let her leave to find Billy and she agrees. Freya leaves immediately, but as she can't find her boat anymore, she starts swimming. Anton sees her leaving, so he starts shooting at her. However, he misses his shots, and quite luckily, Joe arrives on a boat with some cops. He then saves her, and she immediately tells him that she thinks Billy is with Max. Joe also mentions that Henrik helped him and told him about Amy's clearing tape. Freya then says she killed Sarah, but Joe says it was Adrienne's fault. After a while, cops storm the island to capture Adrienne, who has nowhere to run to. Elsewhere, Henrik goes to the tree where Amy first met Sarah. He then writes Sarah's name on the tree before killing himself. Meanwhile, Max calls Freya to inform her of where she is. Shortly after, Freya and Wayne arrive at a field to meet their children. Max finally speaks to her mom and says Billy doesn't deserve to be with the kindred. Freya also says no one deserves it and she then hugs her daughter. 